Sometimes I like to keep things simple. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are doing episode two of my new monthly series, Five Favorite Basic and Common Houseplants. I started this series last month to not only remind myself, but also remind you guys that some of your most beautiful and amazing plants are those that are a little bit more common, very easy to find in your local garden center or local big box stores. And on top of that, they're affordable and easy to care for. So if you haven't seen that first episode, I'll link it right here. So be sure to watch it after this video. What was great about starting this series was not not only did you guys appreciate it, but also my fellow plant tubers were sharing their favorite basic common or classic house plants, which I thought was a great way to kind of balance out the trends that we've been seeing lately, which is to chase and acquire a few of these rare or uncommon house plants, you know, including myself, especially recently, I have been purchasing a lot of those types of plants. So I definitely want to not only remind myself, but remind all of us that, you know, some of our favorite and awesome house plants are a lot of those common or basic ones. And honestly, my plant journey would not be where they are today if it wasn't for a lot of these plants and they are some of my favorites so I'm gonna share with you guys five more of those plants today and also share with you guys a bit of background of how long I've had them and how I care for them so that way you can use it as a reference point if you are looking for these types of plants so without further ado let's start with the ta-da the peperomia parallel so in my last video I spoke about the peperomia frost as being one of my favorite basic and common house plants this is another peperomia I truly enjoy and like I completely forgot about this one you know as I mentioned not many people talk about peperomias anymore but they are some of the most beautiful plants they come in so many varieties and this one in particular the parallel is actually one of my favorites because this is one of the few that actually trails really really nicely as you guys can see here or you can get this climbing up on a trellis and that looks really cool as well so I've had this guy probably for almost two years and how I care for this one is similar to most of my peperomias they love a lot of bright indirect light so I do have this one close to my south facing window on top of this bookshelf and uh, also I water this guy when the soil is completely dry. Unlike the peperomia frost, it's maybe about 90% dry before I water it, but this one, I allow it to uh, completely dry because I found that when I did overwater this, um, a lot of the leaves drop and they are sensitive to overwatering. They are not as forgiving as a pothos, so be mindful of that. The medium and mixture I have this one in is my uh, go-to cacti soil. This is another thing why I love like basic and common house plants is because the maintenance and how to care for them is so easy. My go-to mixture of 50% regular potting mix, 50% cacti soil, and a handful of perlite does really well with this type of plant. And the one thing to also keep in mind when it comes to your parallel or your peperomias, most peperomias I find anyway, is you don't want to repot too early. They typically have a little bit more of a smaller root system. So you want to make sure that when you are repotting, you're not repotting too big because what will typically happen is you will tend to overwater that water will stay there quite a bit they'll take a long time to dry and eventually the leaves will drop but uh, this peperomia parallel is so cool and like I said you guys can find this uh, typically at your local plant shops or even big box stores the next plant I want to share with you guys is the ta-da the aloe vera so I've had this guy for about three years now and he started off as a tiny little pup uh, similar to the little baby that he's showing right now that's how big uh, you know when I first got him and and I mean, an aloe vera, I think it's one of those houseplants that everyone should have because not only does it have uh, you know additional uses for it like you know to help soothe burns because I have used uh, a few aloe vera when I burnt my hand by either spilling oil on it or uh, hot water and whatnot so it's great for that but it's just a great cool house plant like this guy grows so fast and it's such a beast and uh, the one thing I find when it comes to aloe vera is they definitely do need a lot of you know bright indirect light even a couple hours of direct sunlight and uh, they do thrive in neglect the best way to water your aloe vera is when the leaves are starting to feel a little bit more soft and not necessarily firm because they retain a lot of water in these leaves right so they should be a little bit thicker but as soon as they're starting to feel a bit soft in addition to their soil being 100% dry especially when you stick you know your fingers deep down there uh, that's when it's time to water your aloe vera now some of you have asked how do you get your aloe vera to grow straight up uh, the one thing I find when it comes to plants especially if you have um, your light coming from only one side of the window is you need to rotate your plants so that way the light can be evenly distributed and uh, applied to the plant on all sides. So that's what I do with most of my plants, uh, whether that's my pilea or my aloe vera, I do rotate it. Uh, as well as I put this string and tie around it because if I don't, this guy tends to grow outwards and it can be it can look pretty wild and take up a lot of space. So pretty much just use any type of string, whether it's a garden tape or even like a ribbon. And I do have this little like um, moss pole here just for additional support. Uh, but for the most part, this guy holds his own. You know, when you guys can see here at the bottom, 
It's got this little, tiny little pup, and uh, I did propagate this one a few months ago. If you haven't seen that video, I'll also link it here. But uh, a new pup has already grown. I have those other pups in their own containers, and also they're thriving and growing. But um, yeah, really, really cool plant. One of my favorite succulents, and uh, like I said, everyone should have an aloe. So the next plant I want to share with you guys is the, ta-da, the Wandering Jewel or Wandering Dude. And this is one of my favorite trailing husk plants. I think this is called the Zabrina kind. And what I really, really love about this one is this cool striped foliage uh, that has sparkles on its leaves. Like the only other plant that I think has sparkles or crystals on it are uh, I think Ethereums uh, so far that I've owned, but this is so cool. I love the color of it, the silver and the purple. And then the back of its leaf is just this deep purple color and it's so easy to care for, so cool, and really affordable as well too. Uh, now, people often ask me, how do you get this one to look so full like it is right now? And my answer to that is these guys typically grow leggy. So first thing is you wanna make sure you give this one a lot of bright and direct light. I have this one close to my window, and that's a great way for them to retain their color as well as grow strong and not as leggy. But they naturally will kind of grow leggy. So if I take this out of the pot, you guys are actually gonna see that it is pretty uh, not as compact or as full at the top and it'll trail like this but that's because when I do put them in the pot which is a little bit deeper than it's, its container what it's doing is it's kind of sitting and I try to put a lot of these trails back in the pot to make the top look full and that's what I'll often do as these guys grow longer uh, now sometimes some of these guys will kind of like come off or snap off uh, depending on how fragile it is what you guys can do is they're very easy to propagate just stick them back in the soil. I actually don't even put these guys in water and they'll just take off. And that's one thing that's cool about this particular plant is they're quite resilient. They may look fragile, but they actually are quite resilient and they'll take off. So, so again, one of my favorite trailing plants and I'm actually trying to get this guy to grow a little bit more full in the inside. So again, I'm gonna take a lot of these trails and start packing it in. And then the longer trails, I want to definitely hang like on top of a bookshelf. And I think this will look cool, possibly compete against my uh, neon pothos. See what I mean? You just snap right here. So you guys can do right now i'm just gonna pretty much just stick this uh, near its soil and from there i'll just take off now when it comes to watering these guys i do allow the soil to dry out completely but not bone dry if that makes sense so just before uh, it becomes probably 100 percent dry and again you want to make sure that you are watching that water drain through its container so that way you don't have this sitting in wet soil and uh, cause its leaves to drop and on top of that you're gonna get fungus nets so uh, yeah this is one of my favorites so the next I want to share with you guys is the ta-da the ficus benjamina so of course you guys know I love my ficus plants so I have to feature a ficus in this episode and this is pretty cool plant because I love the shape of this and I love the way the leaves drape over and it just looks whimsical I've seen huge ones like this that are kind of floor plants that look so cool in the corner or in an open setting this one I found at Home Depot and I think for like 20 bucks I don't recall but uh, I was so happy to finally get myself a ficus benjamina now a few of you guys have commented that this particular plant loves to drop leaves I personally have never experienced it especially even when I first brought it home uh, I found that they do well similar to most of my ficus plants uh, especially my ficus like elasticas in an area that gets a lot of bright indirect light so again not too close to my south facing window as i would have my ficus elastica but just a little bit further back and i found that the best way to water this one again is I wait till the soil is completely bone dry. Like in fact, I would even wait a couple of days before I decide to water this one. As long as you're keeping your watering schedule consistent, it should not be dropping leaves, I found. Sometimes if you are a bit inconsistent with how you water or care for certain plants, uh, you know, they can go in a bit of a shock and that's when you may experience a bit of uh, acting up of them dropping leaves. In addition, this is really easy to propagate. You can literally just cut any of these stems, stick it in water and within a few weeks, you should start seeing some root form I did propagate this guy uh, just a bit just experiment and you guys can see here I have a tiny baby ficus benjamina in this little four inch container that I propagated maybe about like a month or two months ago but uh, yeah it's a pretty cool plant and uh, it just looks so whimsical so look at it <laughs> so, so the next plant I want to share with you guys is actually my favorite out of this bunch and honestly probably one of my favorite houseplants in general you guys know I love my pothos last time I showed you guys a pearling jade you guys have seen my neon pothos but this one I'm really, really happy about and so proud of it because five months ago, we did a repotting and we tried to get this guy to climb up on a pole. You know, I did do a video of that, but it is the, ta-da, my golden pothos. So look 
how amazing and how huge this guy is. So I'm gonna back up right here. You guys can see how tall he is now. I have it on this moss pole that I actually changed not too long ago because the one he was originally in uh, was a little bit too short and just kept growing and growing. And I found that since I did that, the leaves are a little bit bigger. They're a lot more variegated, which is so cool and so awesome. And I'm just, I'm just really excited to watch this guy grow because this is exactly what I was going for, is turn this into like a floor plant. It originally was a hanging plant on top of my bookshelf, like my neon pothos, but I really wanted just a beautiful you know, floor plant. And I've seen these guys grow in the wild, climbing up on their neighboring trees, and the leaves get so massive and so big, and it's, it's, it's amazing. So I love this plant. So uh, what you guys can typically use is make your own moss pole or you know get some on Amazon. This is the one I made, really easy to make. And uh, when you do attach the uh, vines to the pole, you guys want to get like a garden tape to wrap it around. And you want to make sure that your moss pole is going to be consistently moist. So either spraying that down with some water so that way a lot of these aerial roots can grow a bit and start, you know, latching onto it. And then that way it'll just naturally kind of climb up. But uh, yeah, so happy about this guy. And again, when it comes to my pothos, I care for them and give them a lot of bright indirect light. People always ask, you know, how do you get your pothos to train? how do you get it to grow bigger leaves how do you get more variegation and honestly it's all about the lighting so you want to make sure you give it a lot of nice bright indirect light and uh, yeah this guy is so cool and when it comes to watering like most of my plants and this is again this is the reason why I love common and basic house plants is because they're so easy to care for I water this guy when the leaves are starting to look a little bit droopy or when the soil is completely dry whichever comes first and um, you know does really really well and on top of that these guys are easy to propagate you guys have seen my propagation videos so you can literally double up on your plants and even share them with your friends or family and it's just it's such a cool cool house plant honestly uh, pothos are really one of my favorites uh, I love the neon one but this this one, I think out of all my pothos now, is starting to become one of my favorite, only because I love the way it's climbing. Uh, but yeah, so there you guys have it. That is this month's episode of my five favorite basic and common house plants. Uh, comment below and let me know which one of these guys are your favorite. What do you think we should feature in next month's video? Uh, let me know as well. But other than that, hopefully you guys enjoy this one and we'll see you guys on the next. Peace.